Welcome to another riveting episode of Astronomical Tidbits with Steve Lehman of CAS. Today we're going to go over what is going to be in the night skies in April. Take it away, Steve. Hey, everybody. So we're going to walk you through the, uh, the night sky. I believe Kathy has got me to where I can share my screen. So we're going to try and do that right now. And let's see if we can make that happen. Bingo. And all I got to do is go back to here. All right. So we're looking at astronomy tidbits for the month of April 2021. And first of all, uh, I think everybody knows that uh, last month uh, the excitement was all on Mars. The Perseverance rover had landed. Um, but uh, a little bit new excitement for the month of April. In case you didn't know it, the lander had a little itty bitty helicopter, kind of a drone like thing uh, on its belly uh, called Ingenuity. And uh, Ingenuity has been let go from the rover and is currently sitting on the surface of Mars. And they're planning on trying to fly it around on Mars on April 11th. So I've got a link here that will uh, to take you to a little bit of a preview of that. And also, um, you can also uh, find a, a link that will take you to the, the actual uh, in-person event on April 11th that they choose to have it. The very cool thing about this is the, the uh, uh, Mars atmosphere is much thinner than what we have on Earth. And so to get the, uh, the little helicopter to fly, they've actually had to, to hook up a, a really cool double rotor system. And so uh, the, the video will tell you a lot about that. Perseverance has taken up quite a bit of news lately, but Curiosity is still working away. And there are some Curiosity mission updates. So you can click on that link to find out what Curiosity is doing, uh, a little bit distant from where uh, Perseverance is. And Perseverance has already uh, been taking lots of great images. Um, you can actually hear the, the Martian atmosphere, the wind on Mars, because there's a the microscope, or not a microscope, a microphone. So uh, just all sorts of cool things happening on uh, the, the, the planet Mars. So hope you'll, you'll take a look at that. Uh, night sky events for April. Um, Jupiter and Saturn are up in the pre-dawn sky. So if you're up doing your morning run at, at 5, 6 in the morning, you're going to see uh, Jupiter and Saturn. Um, up in the east. Um, on the night of April 17th, the moon and Mars are going to be in close proximity um, in the southwestern sky. The Lyrid meteor shower peaks on April 21st, 22nd. Um, that means that, that the shower radiates from Lyra the Harp, which is in the eastern sky uh, during the month of April. And the moon's going to be a little bit past first quarter, um, so it still should be a, a good night for seeing some uh, some meteors if the, uh, the the night sky cooperates and it's not cloudy or raining. Best time to to uh, watch meteors are are uh, after midnight, and uh, best way to do it is uh, get yourself a lawn chair, a cup of coffee or cocoa, uh, a blanket, and lay down uh, 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 and stare up toward the east so that uh, you're looking at what we call the radiant or the spot in the sky where the, the meteors will be coming from. And that's going to be toward uh, or from Lyra the Harp. SpaceX, uh, the, the, uh, the worker bee of, of space companies these days, is going to launch the Crew-2 mission to the International Space Station on April 22nd. When I checked this morning, the uh, liftoff time was scheduled for 6.11 uh, a.m. That could change, so uh, you might want to go to the SpaceX um, website uh, maybe a day before just to, to check the link. And uh, the morning of, you usually have the option of uh, watching the launches from either the SpaceX website or the, uh, the NASA website. Uh, the full moon in... Um, April is what we call the pink moon. And because the moon is going to be uh, in its orbit around the earth uh, at its closest approach or perigee, it means that this is going to be 
a super moon. It's going to seem a little bit larger, a few percent larger, pardon me, than what it might normally be. And there are two of these super moons this year, one in April and also one in May. So the night of the, uh, the full moon is April 26th. Uh, once again, I'm including a page that I included last month. If you're looking for uh, uh, much more in-depth information on astronomical events for April, um, I've listed uh, some sites here that are, are really uh, good ones for uh, getting down and dirty into the details. And also the, uh, the third link here, what's up in April? That's that little two to three minute uh, video that NASA puts out every month. Um, this month, they talk a little bit about um, what is happening uh, in, the, uh, in the southern sky uh, as far as uh, observing uh, the constellation Leo. And they also talk about a, an, an interesting atmospheric um, uh, event called an arch that happens uh, on, on clear evenings and clear mornings. And, and that's kind of fun to find out about. So check out what's up in April. So um, what I wanted to do was, was kind of take a, a quick look at what's happening in the night sky. Remember that, that we uh, uh, watch the night sky mostly as we look toward the south. Um, we look toward the e ecliptic, which is the, the line, if you could draw the, uh, the equator of the Earth out into space. And so the east, the south, and the west is where most of the cool stuff is happening. So this is the Eastern sky, uh, right about 9 p.m. on the, the 15th of the month. And you can see that, that uh, we've got some of our, our important uh, spring and, and getting into early uh, summer uh, constellations up. Hercules right here, Bootes, Virgo, the Virgin, and Coma Berenices. A couple of things about each of, the, each of these. In Hercules, uh, this little uh, kind of cross-haired yellow uh, uh, marking tells us that there's a globular cluster there under his armpit. That means that uh, we're looking at a large ball of stars, perhaps uh, hundreds to, to thousands of stars in, in a very close proximity. That can be seen usually from a, a very small telescope. Uh, we've got another globular cluster up here. And uh, that's kind of, oops, all the, the things that we, we've got in that portion of the sky. Other than Bootes is, is kind of one of those constellations that's fun to look like. I, I kind of think of it as, a, as an ice cream cone, uh, kind of hanging out to the left there. Um, if you've got a really large telescope, six inches or larger, um, the area around Coma Berenices or the, the comb, um, is in, in this area right here, an area of lots and lots of galaxies. And um, if you're in a, in a dark spot, and again, with a, a telescope with a, with a large mirror or lens, you're gonna have the opportunity to see lots of, of what might look like circular splotches in this area. Each of those is a galaxy similar to the Milky Way galaxy in which we live. Looking at the southern sky, uh, we've got uh, Leo the lion. This is probably the most prominent of the constellations in the spring. Um, in Leo, we've got a, a, a large bright uh, star here, the, the heart of the lion. Oop, let me get back. Um, in this particular area, um, there is a group of galaxies. So again, if you've got a, uh, ah, gotta quit doing that. Um, if you've got a telescope with a large lens or mirror focusing in through here, um, you can see a, a number of galaxies. There's a, a famous grouping called the Leo triplet in this general area. Also one of, one of the uh, objects that's, that's uh, kind of fun to look at using binoculars is the beehive cluster. And this is in the Cancer the Crab right here. So uh, Cancer kind of leads to Leo and right near the, the cross of the X is this uh, open cluster called the Beehive. 
I don't quite see a, a, a beehive in there, but some of my astronomer friends say, oh yeah, there's a beehive, beehive there with lots of with uh, lots of bees flying around. But it is a, a great open cluster to look at. Finally, we've got the, the western sky. You'll notice that, that uh, it's a little brighter than the eastern sky. That's because uh, even at, at nine o'clock on a, a spring night, there's still a little bit of that, that uh, light from the sun, which is set um, coming over the, the western horizon. Lots more uh, objects to find in binoculars and small telescopes. Again, each of these little circular yellow patterns is a, a star cluster. Uh, these green squares are uh, nebulae. And so uh, lots, of, lots of those kinds of things in basically what is still the, the winter uh, sky getting ready to set. You can still see Orion, although instead of his bow pointing out straight, his bow is pointing uh, down towards the horizon. Gemini, the twins, which earlier in the winter seemed to always appear kind of to the left of Orion and, and kind of a little above, are now directly above Orion. And um, the uh, Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, off to his left rather than uh, down below where we, we normally see it. Uh, in the winter sky. So things shifting around, looking a little bit different uh, in the spring as they're getting ready to set than they do in the winter time. So that takes us through uh, the month of April. Kathy's going to put this uh, uh, PowerPoint online so that you can follow through. Um, I'm hoping that uh, those of you that have signed up for our uh, observing event this coming Friday, that the weather will hold for us. If not, we're, we're looking at an alternate date. We'll make sure to, to let you know about that if we, if we need to change things. As always, if you've got questions, uh, you can shoot them to Kathy. Kathy knows how to get in touch with me. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing some of you perhaps this Friday evening and the rest of you next month with Astronomy Tidbits. And I have to make Kathy the... Uh, if I can figure out how to do this, where's that? Eh. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Well, I felt like I was really out there on the moon and nobody heard me. <laughs> you, were, you were gone there for a minute. <laughs> I don't know why. Just because I put my moon up. Now I want to see the April one. I get a shot of that one. So uh, excellent. That was wonderful. There's lots of great um, activities that are going to be happening in April. I look forward to seeing some clear skies, including yes. this. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Talk to you later.